Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, January 18th. Tesla announced that it is bringing the Cybertruck on a tour of China, but it likely won't be available there for purchase for some time. The Cybertruck's novel design actually made it a challenge to get approved for U.S. roads, and that was the market that it was designed for. Despite this, Tesla is now letting Chinese customers know that they will be able to see the truck in person in their own country. The automaker is talking about a multi-city tour where customers will be able to vote on where the truck should come first. Now, the reason that we're confident that it won't come to the Middle Kingdom for sale is that Elon Musk himself commented on the question saying, quote, getting Cybertruck road legal in China would be very difficult, but we could ship some prototypes over for display. Some Tesla superchargers are getting overwhelmed by new Uber drivers in New York City after a new program enabled a lot of Tesla ride-sharing vehicles in the area. The city made 10,000 new EV licenses available for Uber and Lyft drivers, and Tesla has been the popular brand of choice. Now, these new initiatives have resulted in a lot of pressure on Tesla superchargers in the city, and several local owners are reporting a massive line at the stations. To mitigate the situation, Tesla announced that they will be implementing a congestion fee at the stations in New York, which consists of a new charge of $1 per minute when going past 90%. Now, Tesla is, of course, making new stations. Two of them are on the docket coming to Brooklyn and Staten Island. Tesla told employees that they will do another pay adjustment in the next few weeks after employees expressed disappointment with the last one. Tesla recently announced the annual wage increase for employees across the company following annual reviews. Tesla told salaried employees that they won't be getting their normal stock compensation following these reviews, and the pay increases were also less than anticipated for hourly employees amid the high inflation environment. So Tesla has heard the complaints of these employees and has responded by establishing yet another pay adjustment, which will be influenced by a market review process. Now, what makes this rather rich is that the payment adjustment is happening when Elon Musk is seeking his own, I'll say, quote-unquote, payment adjustment. <laughs> Vietnamese EV maker VinFast saw deliveries pick up in the fourth quarter, but not enough to reach their goal of 2023 in the year. According to a SEC filing on Thursday, VinFast delivered 13,513 EVs in the last quarter, bringing their yearly total to 34,855. Now, despite deliveries picking up all year, around two-thirds of the second and third quarter sales went to one company, Green and Smart Mobility, which is actually an EV rental and taxi company owned by VinFast's parent company. So they're not exactly in-house sales, but pretty close. After an explosive IPO last year, VinFast was actually worth more than Ford, General Motors, Volkswagen, Stellantis, and Rivian combined, that's not the case anymore because they are now down around 93% from that all-time high. The U.S. Transportation Department is investing $148.8 million for repairing and updating nearly 4,500 electric vehicle charging ports in some 20 states. The new funds are part of the $5 billion National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, which is funded by a $1 trillion 2021 infrastructure law. Now, this new set of funds offers 24 recipients in 20 states grants to upgrade, replace, or replace the existing EV charging infrastructure. I know this will come in handy because I had a trip that was fraught with problems, not the Tesla network. But I think you knew that already. Toyota was the target of pranksters who made a fake announcement for Toyota called the Eco Copilot. The team actually built an AI chatbot whose main goal was to push all sorts of EV myths and then channel consumers to seek a cleaner option of buying a Toyota gas-powered vehicle instead of an electric car. Now, the responses from the chatbot used Toyota's intentionally misleading description of their cars being electrified instead of being electric. You can understand why that would be confusing. Now, if you keep the chat up long enough, the AI pretends to go rogue and directs to a different site, which describes Toyota's false marketing. Now, while the words of the AI chatbot and press release are not from Toyota, they do echo many of the talking points that Toyota and their executives have made over the years. All of this to cast doubt on electric vehicles or claim that gas-powered hybrids are cleaner. Yeah. yeah. In today's community comment found on YouTube, D -S Extreme LS3 says, Mikey, love your comments as you end your episode. Very well stated. 
Well, thank you very much. On occasion, I spend more time scripting my response for the community comment than I do for the rest of the episode. Electrek is staffed with dedicated and talented writers that Quick Charge is based on. There are other written stories that are actually not covered here on the show. Some subjects that often don't find their way in include the wild prototypes of the EV industry, green energy news, eVTOL, and almost every opinion piece. Now, if you want to read more of that and other subjects, Electrek has you covered. We also have buyer's guides, tax credit guides, viewership polls, and more. All you got to do is go to your uniform resource locator and type in electrek.co and you're on your way. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G. And I hope you have a great day.